Hello and all, welcome to a Galaxy Man Show interview show. Uh, so for my next guest is this incredible actor known by the name of Jack, uh, who will be in this Star Wars fan series called Relic of the Jedi, a Star Wars fan series. Uh, and yeah, um, so I'm about to give Jack an ad into the live now uh, and have a chat with Jack about his role as Dash Render uh, for Star Wars Relic of the Jedi and have a yeah chat with Jack. Here we go. Hey mate. Hey. Uh, so thank you for coming on to my show. By the way, it means a lot, Jack. Uh, so to people that don't know, so, so to people that don't know who you are, uh, if you can introduce yourself and explain a bit about what you do as a person, and then we'll dive right into the questions. Okay. Uh, I'll struggle with these questions. <laughs> So I am Jack Panderson and I am a writer and director and actor as well, as you've probably seen. I will be uh, playing Dash Rendar in the upcoming Relic of the Jedi, which I am super psyched about seeing. I haven't actually seen it all the way through, I've just seen the scenes that I've been in and helped out with. But uh, yeah, anything else you want to know? <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so we'll dive right into the questions now, Jack. So for yeah, my yeah. very first question, uh, as you mentioned, you're in this incredible uh, Star Wars fan film called Relic of the Jedi. Uh, and you play Dash Render. Uh, what can people expect to see from your role as Dash Render in Relic of the Jedi? Well, I had the very lucky task of being the only non-original character in the actual whole film. Every other character that is in it is created from the minds of the writers, whereas mine was brought in and he's actually based on a game from called Shadows of the Empire. Now, not a lot of people have heard of it, let alone played it. But because I was based on a character that already existed, I kind of had to, it was a bit more pressure on me to kind of get the role right in a way, but I also managed to make up my own in a way. And uh, Cal was very happy with what I did with the character. He was very uh, enthusiastic about what I added to the character. So, I mean, the best way I can sum up Dash Rendar is uh, exactly how Cal summed him up for me. He said it was like, imagine Tony Stark and Han Solo together. They're very similar characters. He's quite an arrogant and cocky character. He likes to think himself very uh, charismatic and uh, the leader of the group where no one else thinks that. <laughs> awesome. So on to my very next question about Dash Render. Mm -hmm. uh, so what was, it, what was the whole experience like for you filming on set wise for Relic of the Jedi? Well, um, I've always been a Star Wars fan for as long as I remember. I grew up with the prequels. I've always loved Star Wars. Um, it has been a dream of mine since I was a kid to be in a Star Wars film. And it was literally a dream come true. I was like a kid in a candy shop, just always, every single moment. Uh, my inner child was just going crazy, just the fact that I was on set of an actual Star Wars film. And that's exactly how I tried it. It was because me it was an actual Star Wars film um, and to see other people around me who had that same passion that same love for the franchise that I have and we were all working together it was such a great atmosphere to be in and I always love being on set anyway as a filmmaker myself I love being on set but it was so much it was a lot different being on set with um, of a Star Wars film Especially when you're surrounded by all these people who have so much passion, not just for the project, but for the franchise itself. And I was surrounded by so many incredibly talented people, like the cast and the crew. They all did a great, great job in everything that they did. And the other actors, brilliant, the crew, everyone. So it was just a, it didn't really feel like a job at all. It just felt like we were all mates having fun together. And the, although the, the sense of professionalism never left, it never, we never really felt like the, the pressure of an actual job. 
awesome. So on to my very next question. Uh, what makes Dash Render different from other from Star like other Star Wars characters uh, from Relic of the Jedi? Um, well, like I said, he's uh, he's like an amalgamation of Tony Stark and Han Solo, but uh, I didn't want him to be like Han Solo. I didn't want him to be compared to Han Solo. I know he's going to be because they're both smugglers, they're both charismatic and arrogant. But I wanted to deviate away from that. And Dash Rendar does have that more serious tone about him. And he can show a bit of coward, cowardice when it comes to it. And he always does look after number one. But he is very charismatic. He is very arrogant. Um, always thinks himself as the one in charge. And he likes to be in control of the scenario. But he also has this freedom about him because uh, he is considered dead by the Empire. Uh, so as far as the Empire is concerned, he doesn't exist. So he has more freedom. He doesn't live with a bounty on his head. He, he's allowed to do what he wants as long as he's just a little bit careful about getting caught about what he's doing. And of course, he's lied to Leia about being dead. And uh, so he's, things are a bit touchy with him and the Rebels. But... So he hasn't quite got the same uh, reputation with the Rebels that Han would have, but he also um, he's kind of seen as a hero amongst the Rebels because of his past story. Awesome. So on to my very next question. Why do you think people should watch Relic of the Jedi when it comes out? Because it's Star Wars. <laughs> um, it's it's an amazing film with an amazing script made by amazing people and I can't stress enough how much, how amazing, everything I've seen so far has just been amazing and everything I've worked on. It, honestly, I, it's, I've seen the other fan films and Star Wars fans seem to make some amazing, amazing films, like fan films that are probably up there with the sequels and I wouldn't, I would be as bold as to say that Relic is up there with them. It has a great production value. Uh, the CGI just looks amazing for everything that it's got. It's, it doesn't look like a student film at all. It doesn't look bad. It, it, it looks amazing. It looks like it's had a really good budget into it. And, and mainly, because, like I was saying, the cast, the crew, it's, it, because we all did this, not for the money and not for the fear. We did this for the passion. We did this for the love, and not just the trade, or not just the industry, but the love for Star Wars. And I think that's really shone through in our performances, in our jobs and our roles. And that's really it, uh, made it as good as it is. And that's why it's going to be amazing. And if if the fans and if people watching are going to love it half as much as we enjoyed making it, then they're in for a real treat. Awesome. So on to my very next question. If Dash Rendar could team up with any Star Wars character, who would he want to team up with and why? See, my favourite character is Boba Fett, but I know Boba Fett and I don't think Dash would ever want to team up with him. But... I mean, I'm going to have to join the bandwagon and say Baby Yoda because that guy is just, <laughs> he's just a great character. He... I mean, he's got everything. He's adorable. He's lovely. He's just so, oh, just, just being able to go around with him and, you know, and he, he's got the force abilities as well. And uh, I, I, he's got no downside to him whatsoever. I mean, I would not mind changing his diaper every day if it means having Baby Yoda coming around everywhere I go because just everything he does is adorable. Awesome. So on to my very next question. Uh, what has been your favourite all-time Star Wars trilogy movie uh, and why? You're probably going to think I'm very uh, basic, but I'm going to say Empire. That one has always struck a chord with me. I've always...
just love uh, Empire Strikes Back. It, for me, like many other Star Wars fans will agree, is the best Star Wars film because it just has everything. It's just perfect. The score, the performances from all the actors, this, this, the character arcs for everyone, it's just perfection. And I love how it ends on a, a bittersweet moment. It's kind of like a kind of a cliffhanger in a way because obviously hands in carbonite Luke's just lost uh, Vader it, it's and the duel between Luke and Vader and the and of course the ultimate reveal the, the best cinematic moment in history well big reveal in Hollywood history is no Luke I'm your father just even though I know it's coming every time, it just still gets me every time. It's just the whole duel itself. And it's the one I've definitely watched the most. <laughs> awesome. So on to my very next question. If you could be in any TV or movie franchise, what would it be and why? Well, it'd have to be Star Wars. <laughs> uh, I've grown up loving Star Wars my whole life. So to actually be in the Star Wars universe would literally be a dream come true. To actually be able to go around the different planets, the different systems, be able to meet all the characters, to live in that life would just be amazing. But if I was to go off with something different other than Star Wars, I'd probably look at maybe Marvel or DC, because I'm a massive fan of both of them. Um, but if I'll be honest, I would probably lean more towards DC, because I feel like their characters are stronger than Marvel's, despite how much better Marvel are making movies. <laughs> awesome. So on to the very next question. So what have you learned about yourself as a person during COVID this year? I've had a lot of time to myself and it's given me a lot of time to reflect on my independence and not relying on other people. And it's given me a chance to um, really work on things that I've not really had a chance to because I've, I've had a lot of free time. So I've been able to work on my scripts that I've been working on and uh, other projects that I've been working on. So it really helped me reevaluate myself and my own independence. So yeah, definitely that. Awesome. So on to my very next question, uh, who inspired you as a person to get into acting or directing uh, and yeah, who influ who influenced you to do that? I'd have to go right back to um, secondary school. Uh, I used to watch these videos. Um, I'm sure most people have heard of them. Astaf movie or ASDF movie. Um, it got me into this guy called Tom Ridgewell or Tomska on YouTube. And he made a lot of um, student films. And uh, it inspired me. I, I looked at his films and I really enjoyed making them. And I saw him like as the lead characters in his thing in his films. And I thought to myself, I can do that. I feel like I could do that. So I start. I grabbed the camera. I got a bunch of mates, and we started making daft little low budget films together. And I really, really enjoyed it. And that kind of what set me off on the route of becoming a filmmaker. And I started taking it more seriously. I started. Uh, taking courses at college and it led to me to go to uni to start studying it so I definitely owe it most of the influence to Tom Ridgewell because he's the one who made me feel like I could achieve it I am capable of doing that and it, I don't need to be like this amazing filmmaker like Chris Nolan or George Lucas I can just pick up a camera get a bunch of mates together think of some daft wacky stupid script and just get out there and film it because that's how all the best filmmakers started I mean Edgar Wright who did the same thing with a super great camera he just got and he just made films awesome so on to my very next question so what are the positives and negatives into the acting industry and how do you get through those negatives as a person the positives I definitely say that uh it's being able to step out of your own head and become somebody else. You get to be a whole different character, a whole different person. You get to live 
in someone else's shoes and you get to create this own character you can be pretty much anyone you want you're not really restricted as much as you are yourself it's the only limit really is your own imagination and that to me has always been like kind of a therapeutic thing for me it's always been very liberal and I've always enjoyed that about acting. It's, it's like if you just go for it, you just get right into the character. You just become the character. You just, you live in their shoes. And it's, like I said, it's very therapeutic. But negatives, it is a very, very challenging and demanding and competitive industry to get into. I'd say about 80, 90% of people, actors actually don't make it. Or make any success of it and it's a very depressing figure but if you go in with the right mindset if you go in with the thought of you're doing it for the trade you're doing it for the passion and the love and you're not doing it for fame you're not doing it for the money you're not doing it with the intentions of making your face on the front cover of vogue then you will probably do better than those who are going in for the wrong reasons but if you're doing it even if it's just as a hobby it is such a great and fun hobby or trade or profession to get into even if it's just a semi-profession i don't want to disrespect the trade at all because i myself would love to get into that but i love acting and to me at the moment it is a little bit of a hobby but i want to make it more of a profession to be honest awesome so on my very last question so what's yeah, cool. next What's next for you after COVID-wise, like project-wise? Uh, so, I have been uh, cast for Harry Osborne in the upcoming Infinite Potential film Scarlet Spider, which will begin filming in summer next year, so definitely looking forward to that. Uh, I have got my own projects going as well. I am currently working on a sitcom called Kittles, which I will be acting, writing, and directing. Um, Carl is uh, helping me with that um, and at the moment that's all I have lined up <laughs> hoping awesome. to get more progress than that awesome well can I just say thank you so much Jack for making an appearance no on my show it means a lot uh, everyone definitely go support Jack's work uh, in, and especially check out Relic of the Jedi coming December 19th uh, it's going to be incredible, so definitely check that out. Uh, any last final thoughts or anything that you would like to say to people? Yeah, definitely. Um, keep up with everything Infinite Potential films, like uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, follow them on Facebook and Instagram. And keep an eye out for the film coming out 19th of December. It will be on YouTube, and you better be watching it because... It's going to be amazing. I am. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Jane. I'm not proud of what I do. I just do it because... It gives you a sense of purpose. A place of belonging. I'm just a petty thief at the end of the day. Is that all you are? The end of the Empire was a payday for the lads of me and you. Imagine all the stuff that was scavenged by the scum of the galaxy. And think about all the things that weren't found. Something's amiss. I feel it easy. You know it would help. Keeping your eyes on the prize.